Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back to another watch party. Um, hopefully you can all hear me loud and clear. Um, we are back for another watch party between the the um, Brooklyn Nets and the Detroit Pistons today. Um, yeah, some interesting news has happened. <laughs> Regarding the man to my right, um, or to my left, your right, he's now gone off screen. But um, the big news out of today is uh, Ben Simmons deciding, yeah, my season's done, um, which is a huge shame. Um, but, you know, <laughs> it's, it's not as if we couldn't really expect it to happen, because that is very on brand for a Ben Simmons sort of player who just cannot stay on the park and stay fit. Um, it is a shame. He probably just needs to call it a day to just benefit every single party that has any form of involvement with him. Um, let me know your thoughts on that one. Um, but today we play the Pistons, of course, and that is a big game. Of, well, I mean, every single game is big for this team. Um, but the main reason is because, well, the Hawks have decided to keep winning which means that every win we get is getting cancelled out by um, the Hawks. So, yeah, this is a, a, a very important game, though. I mean, the Pistons are really, really healthy. They've only got one injury named on their injury report, um, Quinton Grimes with some knee injury. Um, can the Nets possibly challenge the Bulls for that ninth spot? Well, they're going to have to start winning games and overtake the tenth spot before we even consider the ninth. Um the standings, I may need to do a new, like, overlay to get the standing sort of up. Um, hold on a second. I just want to see what the standings actually are. Um, so right now, um, the Nets are three games behind the Hawks in the standings. A win today would make it, um, of course, two and a half. Um, and the Bulls are five games ahead. So I wouldn't worry about them at all. Um, the Pistons are winners of one in the last 10. Um, so it's going to be very interesting to see what sort of um, performance they dish up today. But they are fit. They have, um, or they competed against the Miami Heat the other day, which is, um, I mean, a good sign for them, not so much for us. Um, but we have won three of our last four games. A win today would make it 4-5. The last couple of um, games I missed, the first game happily missed because uh, we lost to Memphis, which, I mean, couldn't have been good at all. Conceded a ton of offensive rebounds and um, the free throws were just disgusting to watch. Um, so that was always awful. Um, yeah, so that game happened and then we played Philly and started very slowly, but, you know, wrestled ourselves back into the game and was able to get the victory at the back end of that match. So um, Dennis Schroeder was huge in that game. He's actually having a really good stretch of form um, and that's going to be important for this team if they want to keep winning um, and give themselves any shot at making the playoffs. Um, right now, um, the Nets, or should I say Schroeder, in the last six games, he's leading the team in points, assists, and three-point percentage. He's also shooting 51% from the field. Um, so to actually specify the numbers, 17 points a game, six and a half assists a game, two and a half turnovers a game, 51% from the field, 59% from three. So he's just been superb for the team um, for the most part in that three-point percentage. I mean, the eye test really tells you how good he's been. Um and we need to see more of that. Clax had a good game the other day. I think he had 17 points and 10 rebounds. And, and he needed to have that sort of a performance against a Philly team with a rotation or a center rotation of Paul Reed and Mo Bamba. So, um, yeah. Let's have a look at the chat on what you lot are saying. Um, Danny, welcome to the stream. Um, Thomas, what do you think of Kevin Ollie as a coach so far? Um, I really don't think you can say much. Um, we've played some pretty weak teams and won. We've played some weak teams and lost. Um, and we haven't really... I mean, we've barely played against actual good opposition. 
Um, I think those games will arise at the back end of the year. We do have the second easiest schedule in the run home. So I wouldn't say that what happens from here on out is going to be a great indication of what Kevin Ollie's doing. Um, but I mean, you can only play the oppositions in front of you. We've played pretty well in recent weeks or in recent days. Um, yeah. Funnily enough, there, there was a, um, on March the 29th, there was a Ben Simmons t-shirt giveaway for the first 10,000 fans that entered the arena, but now there's a delivery delay on that. So it looks like everyone's got a proper gauge of how this season is going to go for Ben Simmons. Um, it's pretty sad the way it's all panned out. I mean, you can't really help him, but someone's just got to tell him, call it quits, mate. We've we've um tried to manifest it long enough and make it happen. It's just not happening, so just give up. And I know Ben's probably not going to want to give up because all that money on offer, given he's uh twenty six or twenty seven, he's still got a long way to go in NBA terms. But um, yeah, it's probably the best thing for him to just yeah, he's just got to call it a day. Hold on a second. My bad, my bad. If you are enjoying the stream so far, uh, make sure to drop a like on it. And uh, subscribe if you are new as well. Um, we'll be back here on Sunday, or in some of your cases, Saturday night for Nets versus the Hornets. Um, and then we play the Cavaliers who, well, have been missing Donovan Mitchell. Um, and the Hornets, well, they're, they're missing LaMelo Ball. So a couple of absences, though the Pistons, as we've just said, um, are not missing, well, they're not missing really anyone. Now, the Nets, they are missing Ben, Cam Thomas, who may be back in a couple of games or a game or two. Dayron Sharp's out with a wrist injury. Cam Johnson's out with an ankle sprain. Um, and Derek Whitehead, of, of course, is out for the season with a shin problem. Um, so lots of injuries. I'm very surprised that the Nets did not run Jalen Wilson um, in place of Cam Johnson. Instead, they've decided to run DSJ. So God help me for the offense that I'm about to witness. Um, but who fucking knows what result this is going to reap. All right. So the game is underway. The Pistons win the tip. I, I have a lot of reservations because the uh, the Pistons playing a two-center lineup, essentially. That's not exciting me for the way this rebounding sort of dynamic's going to go. In the middle, it's Durin who feeds Stewart. We're just too small. It's a three-second call, though, on Stewart because I think he was wanting the ball in the low post and, and hung around there for too long. So um, the Pistons probably need to feed that pass off much earlier. The Nets will get into their first set of the game. So DSJ on the court. Oh, God. He's going to have to have a good game today. I just don't understand why he's not playing Jalen Wilson. Because um, there's just no shooting on the court with Dennis, who shoots a three now and bricks it. That's what's going to happen. They're going to. Uh, it's going to essentially be a four and five, and then Dennis is just the odd man out, chucking up bricks because he's left wide open. Cunningham, good roll there by Duran, but a good swat away there by Schroeder, who hit it out of play. So Pistons will inbound to Ivy. He'll get into the paint, the spin, the kick out to Thompson, now to Duran in the post. He's going to try take on Claxton. Well held. Good cut there by Ivy, who throws it down. First two points on the board for the Pistons. I mean, surely someone would have had to have read that cut down the middle. It was too easy. We had it well covered. And of course, you've got to have the bailout option, don't you? Already, the offense looks stagnant as fuck. Schroeder, bounce pass, steal. It's, they're going to have to make the sub very quickly. That is thrown out of play, and it's going the other way. Um, so the Pistons are very much prone to turning the ball over a ton. Um, 
It's going to be Nets ball after they squandered the fast break opportunity. And the Nets still have not scored and really not put up a good high quality look as of yet in this game. Bridges, DSJ, Bridges, catch and shoot three, top of the key. It's off the board by Cunningham. You're going to have to make the sub. I don't know how long he's going to take for it, but this is not going to work. We're not going to score a fucking point at this rate. Ivy on the perimeter. Going to drive on DSJ. It's an easy layup. Didn't get the angle. Duran got the offensive board and was able to throw it down. So we're just lacking size in so many different areas. In this, ga in this game, man. Stewart and Duran are just too tall. So, you probably need to counter that by having a good offensive rebounder at small forward. Doe, Wilson, and Claxton. And instead, we've gone with an extra guard, which I don't think is going to help us in any way, shape, or form. Except maybe point of attack defending. Um, so... Pistons up 4 nothing in this opening quarter. The sub just doesn't make sense. Get Dennis to the damn bench. Schroeder. DSJ. Oh, God. He's going to shoot a fucking pull-up mid-range. Nope, he's going to drive it and blow the layup. Oh, God. Cunningham the drive. Goes baseline. Extra pass to Thompson. Under the basket, he kicks it out. Stewart. Back to Ivy, top of the key. We went under the screen. The three doesn't get the bounce. The rebound secured by Claxton. Now, you need to just push the pace because we have not had any flow offensively early on. Finney Smith for three, top of the key. That's also off. And the Nets have still not scored. <laughs> How long is this going to take? Duran. Going to go down low on Finney Smith. And he's too big as well there as well. Oh my god, bro. This is this deficit is just going to grow very very quickly. Get DSJ to the damn bench for fuck's sake. Every time you pass to him, he just doesn't fucking do shit. Four to shoot. Claxton puts one up. That's another terrible shot. Oh, thank fuck he's making a change. Thank fuck. DSJ's going to the bench. Mate, you couldn't give that more than three minutes. <laughs> it's actually a miracle we're only down six. Because usually we start games very, very poorly. I think, well, if if Kev, Kevin Ollie was going to go with the guard, he had to go with Lonnie Walker. It was a no-brainer after the game he played the other day. So a bit of extra shooting, which makes you a little bit more formidable. Another two off the glass for Cunningham. They've started with the first eight of the game, and we're going to get a timeout. That is... Kevin Ollie just shot himself in the foot with that opening lineup. Whoever decided... Whoever decided that that was the the um starting lineup to go for against the Pistons, bro, you're just asking. You're asking for the... um. For a shit start, really. God damn, that is just, yeah. So, look, the Nets have not started well at all. Um, that's the best way to put it. Um, yeah, it's it's been very rough. But I, I have hope, because we've only shipped off the eight points... Um, and in previous games, you'd absolutely get walloped um, for having such a start as we have. We have not made any of our five field goals. Um, and the biggest issue is DSJ has taken two of them and he can't space. So that's why we've been going so slow. Um, Pistons, four of six from the field. They've started really well. They found Duran under the basket. Um, they've got that size there with him and Stewart. Um, being picked up by Finney Smith and Claxton. Going to be interesting to see who comes off the bench because we don't have Dayron Sharp. We're going to have to play small ball. Um, and there's no Ben Simmons either. So, oh, goodness gracious. What a weird sort of start. I think Watford's going to have to play backup five or even Noah Clowney 
may have to play back up five minutes. Um, he's been called up, so he should be getting a go. Um, and if he isn't, well, not a fan. So, the Nets, yeah, off to a stinky start on a uh, Friday morning slash Thursday night. I would say the Pistons, um, 100 to 9. Yeah, honestly, at this rate, that's what it looks like it's going to be. We don't look like we're going hit, gonna to hit double figures in this game. Bro, why is this happening every game with bad starts? Well, this is a different reason. It's because you play DSJ at in the same backcourt as Dennis Schroeder, and usually that just results in a recipe for disaster. Um, like, there's just no spacing. I don't know why we didn't start with Walker or Wilson. I would have played Walker off the bench and started Wilson. You need that extra size when your front court is seriously undermatched against theirs. You need extra numbers. You need extra hustlers and rebounders. Um, you well, like, what are you doing having a six-one guard out there? Granted, I mean Cam Johnson plays like a six-one guard, so it makes sense. That's a great rotation across by Thompson, who sent that into the Pistons bench after Schroeder blew by his defender, and um, the Nets still are stranded on zero points. So they're gonna have to try find another way in. The screen set, McCall. Gets into the paint, the body bump, the kick out to Finney Smith. Lost the ball, rebound, or steal for the Pistons. Down the middle, Cunningham. Corner three, Ivy in front of the bench. It's good. Are we going to fucking score a basket or what? So the Nets find themselves starting slow again, and that's what they did against Philly the other day. Bridges lost the ball. He got it back. Walker has a lot of space, and he knocks it down, and the Nets are on the board. It only took four and a half minutes, and we've got a little scuffle. Oh, not really. I thought there was a scuffle under the basket, but there wasn't. So the Nets finally score, and guess who it's come off? The man who's played one minute off the bench. Cunningham will get into the paint. The lob, that's too easy. Oh, my God. It's just been too, too easy. I can't say anything else. Walker just is feeling it. He shoots again, and he misses badly this time. Fucking lock up defensively, bro. They're shooting ridiculously well. <sighs> Not very supportive the way we've defended today. The camaraderie's been sort of lacking. A lot of plays on an island having to defend one-on-one. -on -one. Clax does well there, though, to force a travel on Duran and a turnover. The Nets will have it. They trail by 10. And, um... Three points in five minutes, bro. That's just a bit embarrassing, to be honest. Klax is going to go to the bench, so we're going to play small. And I don't know who's coming onto the court because Wilson's still on the side. Bates Diop playing early first quarter minutes. Are you kidding me? Schroeder tries his luck from the outside and he snipes and connects. So two threes for the Nets. That's contributed to the entirety of their points after they started, well, they hadn't scored a bucket in like five minutes. That's another offensive foul. So Duran in the last couple of possessions has been giving away a few fouls, which you probably don't want to. When you got this early lead, you want to take full advantage of that, but they, um, they only lead by seven. And, and amazingly enough for the Nets' terrible start on offense, they only trail by that that amount so consider that a win Bates D off the handoff to Bridges and now the screen Bridges gets into the paint walking a tightrope where the fuck is he passing that bro oh my god that is a horrific pass I don't know where he's looking there there was well Casper probably was sitting on the outside um for the Nets because I sure as hell didn't see anyone it looked like he was passing to a ghost. To the corner there for the Pistons. Thompson will drive. Extra feed to Stewart. That's good defense by Finney Smith. What the fuck? How is that a foul? And J-Dub is going to enter the game for the first time.
So the Nets lead or trail by seven. Very lucky to be trailing by seven given this awful start. Um, but luckily they're playing the Pistons and you can sort of afford to have a bit more of a slower start, a bit more leeway. Ivy the drive. That is just an absolute cakewalk of a layup for the Pistons. Um, and they lead by nine. Ivy's just found it too easy to get to the basket, man. Walker, high screen. Bates Diop is open. Pump fake. I thought he traveled. Puts one up and it's a miss. And the rebound for the Pistons. God, we are... We are... God, we're trash. Thompson the drive and the throwdown over Bates Diop. Getting cooked at the moment, mate. You're playing small ball and still getting beaten. Schroeder into the paint. And he was fouled. Walking a tightrope on the sideline. They're just driving and, and exploiting the lack of size we have under, under the basket. Like, oh, goodness gracious. Watford is in, so Finney Smith to the bench. And the Nets will play, well, I don't know who they're playing at the five, to be honest, but we're slender as hell. Bridges got Stewart on him, and he's going to shoot a three over him. And how did that rim out? I have no fucking idea, but another miss. A drive by Cunningham. Pass is knocked away. Watford, we have the numbers. DSJ, extra feed. Watford blows the layup. Bates Diop puts it up and in as he was trailing the play. But um, that really sums it up. Can't even make a fucking layup. Eight points for the Nets in just under eight minutes against Detroit. How fucking bad are we? Cunningham, one-on-one -on -one with Bridges. Going to shoot a three. Well, fair to say we don't have that sort of shot creation on our team, do we? Pistons up a dozen. Bates Diop. Looking for a handoff. Gets it to Wilson. To DSJ. Bounce pass to Wilson who rolled to the, the basket. And he fucking travelled, bro. He had the defender in the air and he's moved his feet. Are you kidding me? So... The, the Nets, or, or Kevin Ollie just set the tone from minute one with that fucking lineup. That's put us in the mud. If we didn't have that lineup, we're probably dead even with them. For the the incredibly bad start we've had, we, would, we wouldn't have conceded the first 11 points of the game if we were running out a lineup that was just a little bit more different than this one. So, free throws coming up here for Cade Cunningham on that drive attempt. He was fouled on the arm. And the first free throw is good for Detroit. They are fucking dominating. Dominating. I mean, there's a lot of time for the game to swing. As we saw last game when we trailed by, what, 14, 15 points? So... The the Nets have really got to cap capitalize on the minutes without Kate on the court for sure. Bridges to Bates Diop. The handoff to DSJ. We feed McCall, who's getting absolutely smothered. Wilson's open in the corner. Gotta hit those. He misses. The rebound secured by Ivy. It was a good look. But I mean, you're an NBA player, gotta hit those wide open shots, especially when we got eight points and the Pistons are chucking up threes like that. Fournier's in the game for the uh, the Pistons. And now Watford. Good cut there by Bates Diop, who can't fucking make a layup. Bro, if you can't make a layup, we're screwed. <laughs> We've scored eight points in a fucking game. This is embarrassing. Stewart, another two. Look at that. You see the difference. They fed them in the post. They score. We get fed in the post. Can't fucking make it. We're 20% from the damn field and the Pistons are 77%. Wilson keeps on firing and misses again. God damn, this is disgusting. Bro, this is embarrassing. Fucking hell, 24 to 8, bro. 
Oh my god, I thought the Memphis loss was bad. Well, this game is just, I mean, exceeding expectations. I mean, you know that meme that always floats around? Our expectations um, for you were low, but holy fuck, that is incredibly suitable for this scenario right now. Look at the box score, bro. Bro, what is this? Three of fucking 16 from the field. Four turnovers. We've had more turnovers than field goals made, and we're nine, nearly nine minutes in. We're eight and a half minutes in. Oh, Jesus Christ. This makes me want to die. Um, the Pistons, look at their percentage. Bro, if you had have told me that this team have won nine games on the season, I would have called you crazy. But but best believe they have. And and the even more concerning thing is they lead by 16 and they've had five turnovers in the first quarter. That is a terrible amount. And yet they've got all this output. Every starter has scored. They've got three players with six or more. Um, it's just been too easy for them. There's no two ways about it. We're getting absolutely roasted. Um, and our, you know, our looks are <laughs> terrible at best be honest um who's bridges going to blame now i mean to be quite frank there's not one person to blame because <laughs> all of them are responsible it is just like from minute one why would you start dsj i just don't get it we know that that spacing is rubbish with him so why would you start the game with him we knew from minute one it's just going to be a disgusting watch with the offense um the minute we gave away 11 points didn't score in the first like four and a half minutes you just knew it was going to be a shit first quarter um okay it's still early it is but i can't see the personnel changing quite frankly because we don't have that luxury basically everyone we've played to this point um is like are our only players available so Where's the offense going to come from? I mean, Mikel needs to lift, of course. He has not scored a fucking point. Um, what? Like, the Pistons are always a nightmare sort of matchup. It really doesn't make sense. Um, Cam Thomas will be back, well, hopefully. I mean, watching us score eight points in eight and a half minutes, you would hope, or nine and a half minutes, actually, you would hope that he's going to be back sooner rather than later because I can't bear to watch this shit. Fournier on the wing, picked up by Watford. Let's hope the timeout actually knocked a bit of sense into them. And the Nets immediately... Well, I thought they had gotten the steal because Watford was playing some great defense, but instead it's going to be um, still Detroit ball. Let's have a look. Oh, that's a very line ball sort of decision. How are we leaving them wide open off the inbounds? Luckily, a missed three. The Nets need to push the pace. Push it. Laxton, Watford, good move, but he fucking travelled. You idiots! Oh my god, bro! <sighs> Look, it would just be excellent if we could actually give ourselves an opportunity to turn around our offence. Instead, we can't even get a shot up because, well, we're fucking turning the ball over as ridiculously at a rate as we are. Fournier, pump fake, Wiseman, the push shot, that's long. Bro, Wiseman is in the game. He has been stinking up the gaff this season. I just beg you exploit that matchup. Claxton, we need you to get touches. Watford's open on the outside. He drives, gets into the paint, the turn. He fucking travelled again! Bro! <laughs> this is so shoot. This is so cooked. Six turnovers and three made field goals. Trendon Watford, stop moving your fucking pivot foot. Oh my God, you cannot make this up. They try to lob it up and Fournier has scored the basketball unintentionally. That's when you know it's cooked. We're down 18 points. It's not from a lack of defense. It's because we don't know how to score the fucking basketball. And Mikel Bridges finally hits a shot. So, look... As bad as the quarter's been, if you can get it down to maybe a dozen, you can definitely peg it back in the second quarter. Fournier for three. The pull-up is off. The rebound secured. Now, you have to move the ball. 
Watford, who was love turning the ball over in the early going. Claxton fakes the uh, handoff. He gives it to Bridges instead, who gets into the paint. He has not shot a mid-range this whole game. DSJ in the corner knocks down a three, and there's a foul off the ball. I swear if they chalk it off, I'm going to be in the shits. There's no way they chalk that shit off. Oh, my God, it's going to count. It's going to count. So DSJ hit the three. And there's a loose ball foul. So I think a free throw actually arrives here for Claxton. Because it was on the shot or after. So Clax draws it. Thompson, I don't know what he's thinking with that foul. Um, but we're going to see subs because I've heard the horn. Walker's back in. Bridges goes to the bench for a breather after playing the entire first quarter. And um, it's Claxton at the free throw line. I think he only gets the one free throw, even though he didn't shoot the ball. He only gets the one shot because the shot, of course, counts. Except it was a two-pointer. It wasn't a three, which is just devastating news. So Clax at the line will shoot one. And convert the three-point play. He's actually been shooting the free throw very, very well recently. Um, I don't think he missed last game. Um, that stroke adding a fair bit of consistency. It was knocked away. It went straight to Fontecchio and the three is off. Get the board, please. Lax does. And the Nets, amazingly enough, for all their struggle, can get this lead down to a dozen or, sorry, ten or under. Schroeder one-on-one. He's going to cook on Marcus Sasser. And there's a foul, and it was a block. It won't be considered goaltending, but a good bit of assertiveness there by Dennis, who needs to get a few points in the bank for him as well because uh, he's had a good stretch of games, but he hasn't had nearly the explosive start we need from him. Alrighty. So free throws coming up here for Dennis Schroeder. And um, the Nets got that point re-added. Um, on that DSJ3. So the Nets had eight points about a minute and a half ago, two minutes ago. Cade Cunningham went to the bench. All their centers have gone to the bench, and all of a sudden the Pistons have their lead back down to 10. If Schroeder makes the free throw, it's actually down under 10 into single digits, which is absolutely amazing, all things considered, because we started the game absolutely abysmally but Schroeder of course has to ruin everything I just said by missing the second free throw <laughs> so the Pistons have a lot of clock to work with here Fontecchio the drive he lost the ball oh come on bro Lonnie Walker had his back turned it would have been a steal if he was a little bit more self-aware not guarding the man so 26 to 16 Pistons in the corner will inbound to Fournier. And we've got to try to keep it out of Cunningham's hands for sure. Fournier, step back, forced into a pass. Sasser the drive, layup, off the window, it's off. And Walker's going to put up a three. Oh my God. Oh, it's off. It's a quarter time. And I tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, you may be like, you're losing by 10 to the fucking Pistons. Why are you happy? Bro, we had eight points in nine and a half minutes. So I would consider being only down 10 a win because that 10-point lead is nothing in, in the modern NBA. You go on one 9 run and all of a sudden the lead is, well, essentially tied. Quarter time is here, though. And um, I put Schroeder in the spotlight. He's got four points. Um, and amazingly, DSJ is actually leading the Nets in scoring. All things considered, even though I bagged the shit out of him, um... Or, well, I bagged the shit out of him for being non a non-floor spacer, yet, yeah, he's got the most points. Um, a very worrying thing today, six turnovers, only four assists in the first quarter, and three of those are Mikel Bridges. So, um, good job by Mikel for distributing the ball, but, bro, where are the assists at? The ball movement's been really, really lackluster. We haven't played very quickly um, the percentages are very, very low. Haven't been to the line enough. 
Um, and then from a Pistons perspective, they started the game like a house on fire, but they have missed, um, oh, sorry. They have missed five of their last six shots and uh, their last three three three-pointers. So that's what's given us a little bit of confidence going into the second quarter. Definitely have the advantage. Um, We were down 26 to eight, I believe. So we've scored the last eight of the quarter. And um, look, as I said, I would consider that a win going into the second quarter. Um, Interestingly enough, three of our four three-pointers have come from the right wing. So maybe that is a spot of success for us today. Um, But interesting to see what the second quarter has to hold. If we can carry that momentum over, we've talked about time and time again this season, you end a good quarter or you end a quarter well, that usually will will reflect how you start the second. So hopefully um, we have a fair bit of confidence going into the second quarter. Um, worst quarter I've ever seen. I guarantee you, you probably haven't seen the worst yet or we've definitely had to endure a couple of bad games this season from quarter one. Um, alrighty. So the Nets have just got a knuckle down here with their free throws. They've got a knuckle down here with their shot selection. Only eight field goals attempted on the inside. 12 threes attempted on the perimeter. So shots have been there, but I mean, when the offense is really faltering, you've got to just attack the basket like Claxton does there on Wiseman, and he fucking traveled again. How many times are we going to get pinged with a travel call? That's the third time in the game. You're just absolutely ruining your opportunities to cut into the deficit when you're not even giving yourself an opportunity to, well, make inroads. Thompson just lost the ball and Claxton was there to swoop and get the steal. And now the Nets in transition. Schroeder, bit passive there, but he does change the pace. And a good little bit of hesitation had Fournier on the back foot. And uh, it was an easy blow by, easy score off the window. So Schroeder scores his, well, second basket of the game. We don't box out, and Wiseman scores the putback after they miss on the outside. So that's another Achilles heel of ours. Um, And that's the reason we lost to Memphis the other day. Free throws, couldn't make them, and also couldn't get the stops. Claxton, oh my goodness. That was like a failed attempt at a reverse dunk, but even though the rim got away from him, he was able to somehow put it up and in and get that bounce off the rim. So the Nets trail by eight. The offense has started to lift just a little bit and normalize. Wiseman, the spin move, the easy hook shot over the top of Clax again, and Wiseman scored the last couple of points for the Pistons. All their points, in fact, in the second quarter. Schroeder, oh my God, through the legs, Claxton, the hook shot, gets the bounce. That is a smooth move. And Schroeder with the absolutely polished dime there. Sasser, the bounce pass to Thompson. Who the fuck is defending? Oh my God, bro. Claxton just backing off, allowing an easy jam. That's pretty pathetic defense if you're Clax. Would have been a bit of miscommunication under the basket, trying to protect the lob pass and um, try box out, but they've just completely forgotten to guard the on-ball defender. DSJ for three in the corner. My God. Knew he missed it. And then was able to pickpocket Fournier, Finney Smith, the three. It's good. And the Pistons, I mean, could have gone up the other end, but a very quick five-point swing of sorts. And now it's down to a seven-point game. Sasa the drive. Bro, Clax is just playing way too passive, man. He's sagging off. Playing this drop coverage when you really shouldn't. It's a blocking foul on, I believe, Sasa. And, um... Schroeder draws that foul, so... DSJ, I mean, for the awful three he chucked up off the side of the backboard, he converted it into a three because of a quick steal, quick pass, and a quick score. So, Mikel Bridges back in. You would expect him to play heavy minutes tonight, even though we've got... Well, we play three games in four days, which isn't going to be pretty at the back end. Finney Smith, good drive. Try to go up and score, and he did through contact over Wiseman. So the Nets had eight points in nine and a half minutes, and since that point, they have scored 19. So it's been a pretty explosive 
sort of offensive showing in the last four or five minutes. Fontecchio was open under the basket and they just did not see that one. And now Sasa on the outside will cook on Shrew to step back three. Hits back iron. The board by Walker. Push the pace again. Go. Walker. Hesitation. Cross. Takes on Fournier. Got right by him. Oh my god. Oh, that is ridiculous by Lonnie. The hang time. The scoop. Kevin Ollie is loving it on the bench. He gives a little chest bump there. Oh, that is absolutely poetic. My God, the hang. Let the defender get by. Switched hands. Scored off the glass. It is an absolute joy to watch Lonnie Walker play basketball when those layups, those acrobatic sort of layups are going down. I seriously think Walker should be starting. Well, for a game like today, he should have. If you wanted to run a guard in place of Cam Johnson, you needed to start Lonnie Walker. Instead, we decided, nah. Nah, we're going to fucking run DSJ, um, who's not necessarily the greatest player for spacing. But um, we've recovered from the uh, awful start, I will say. Um, the Nets scored only 16 first quarter points. Um but they have recovered well. Um, they were down by as much as 18 in the opening quarter. Yeah, they were down 26 to 8, and um, they've really wrestled it back well. A 20 to 6 extended run has meant that that lead has really gone down for the Pistons, and um, they started the game 10 of 13. Now, since um, Ivy's gone to the bench and Cunningham and basically all their starters, um, the three-pointers have not fallen um, and they're still shooting 60% from the field, but um, they were 10 of 13. So they've sort of normalized a little bit, even though that 60% is way too high for my liking. Um, the Nets have had seven turnovers, but they've started to move the ball around a little. They had four assists in the entire first quarter. They've got four assists here in three and a half minutes of the second. Um, they've hit a couple of three-pointers or one three-pointer. And um, that field goal percentage... Believe it or not, it was 3 of 16 to start the game. They have scored 9 of their their last 11 field goals. Um, and it's been a good range of scoring. Very slow start. It was dire viewing about 15 minutes ago. You look at that box score and it's basically barren for points. But now nearly every net that's taken to the floor has scored. Um, Schroeder leads the way with 6. Um, and he's also, after a dimeless first quarter... Um, he's also got the two dimes here in this second quarter. So good shit by him. Um, the Nets have really responded well after that slow start. And um, look, you've just got to hope that, well, the Pistons starting lineup isn't going to be as punishing as it was in the first quarter because, I mean, we saw how damaging they were. They're a sort of, they're a matchup nightmare, I think it's fair to say. Ivy's back on. And so is Cade Cunningham. So the Nets actually got another point added as well. So I don't know where that point's come from, but um, the Nets only trail by five. Duran knocked away by Walker on the handoff to Fontecchio, but the Pistons still hold, and it's now Cunningham picked up by Bridges. He will drive down the middle, and the push shot didn't have enough sauce on it. Good rebound by Schroeder, protected the space well. And now he's going to leave it to the trailing Finney Smith, the kick out to Bridges, the drive gets through stops and now rolls it back out to Schroeder with 11 to shoot here. So they will play a little bit more patiently. Six, five, Schroeder gets into the mid range pass. Claxton puts one up. What on earth is that shot? <sighs> Clax is a bit like Ben Simmons in a way. Like he doesn't, he sort of shirks from the contact on the interior. Cunningham instantly scores and has an impact. So that is, that is their team. Basically, you stop Cunningham, you basically stop the Pistons. Um, Schroeder on the drive, bounce pass to Claxton, the push shot. He's had a shocking game today. I tell you what, he's had a shocker. What on earth is Schroeder doing guarding Duran? Okay, we made that adjustment. Mid play, Duran swatted by Claxton, rebound Ivy, push shot is off, gets another rebound. And it's going to be a foul. You're fucking kidding me. Bullshit, old man. Bro, that referee looks like he belongs in a retirement home. 
Mate, what are you doing officiating on an NBA court? So we're getting the stops now, but we're just not getting the rebounds, which is sort of uh, defeats the purpose. And look at this. We're getting some Noah Clowney minutes at the five. I think he's going to get cooked here by Duran, but you give him the opportunity. He's been playing well in the G League. Cunningham, another three. Defensive coverage has got to be better than that. They've just doubled their lead off the back of two threes by Cunningham. And I think both have been off second chance points. Clowney, pass to Schroeder. A lot of space being afforded. And Schroeder is just on a heater from the outside. He hits another three-pointer. That's his second of the game here. He's been on a tear. Cunningham on the outside. Bounce pass. Well done by Noah Clowney gets the steal. Oh, my God. We nearly fumbled the bag there. Corner three. Walker. Yes. Noah Clowney turning defense into offense. We nearly fucked it up. It nearly got flung the other way. Kevin Ollie is lording his team to play defense. Cunningham, give and go. Gets into the paint. Good defense by Clowney. No box out because numbers had overcommitted. And the Pistons get another two points on the offensive glass, bro. Great defense by Noah Clowney. Bridges will get it here. Picked up by Jaden Ivey. In the corner. Skip pass to Schroeder. Tries again. To open. You cannot allow those. And Schroeder's hit another three. As we said pre-game. In the last six games. He is shooting a tick under 60%. From three. Clowning more great defense. Another fucking set of second chance points. And Ivy converts again. Fucking box out. Oh my god, their last like three buckets have come from that avenue. It's a joke. Schroeder nearly ankle broke himself. Walker on the wing. Screen by Clowney. Walker's going to try cook on Cunningham and he absolutely lost him. Had him. <laughs> he had him lost. He was in another country. And Walker was able to score wide open as a result. Cunningham now, we're playing a bit of zone. To try counteract, well, the scoring. But you've got to get the rebound. It's Who cares if you get a fucking stop? Ivy just lost the ball. And there's going to be a foul. I don't know if it's going to be deemed a shooting or a pass. Um, or a reach-in foul. Because I don't think Ivy was looking for the shot there. I think he was looking for the feed to the corner. So the Nets trail by five. Five to play in the second quarter. Clowney's been playing good in, like, we've seen him in limited minutes here in the NBA. But every time he's played, defensively really held his own. And here he is again being disruptive, and we get a steal from it. Clowney again knocks it away. DSJ, we're shooting 77% from the field in the quarter. Fam, we shot 20% for, like, 10 minutes of the first. And here we are. How quickly the NBA... Or teams in the NBA can change. Walker hits another three. Nets have cut it down to a single possession for the first time since probably the opening minutes where we had zero points and it was like two nothing. Cunningham on the outside, the drive. Block again, good rotation. We don't have the numbers. Stewart's fouled under the basket. But bro, Doe and Clowney. Clowney has been class. He's been better than Claxton and he's been on the court for three minutes. Mate, really holding his own down low and um, doing good vertically, forcing misses, not fouling. That's just a great sort of play to have. And you know what? If you're going to be shorthanded at certain stages this season, especially if we don't have Dayron or um, who's the other bloke, um, we don't have Dayron and Ben would play back up five minutes you would have assumed if he was in or with the team for the rest of the year. Um, Clowney's got to play. Fuck off the Bates Diop minutes. Seriously. Nothing personal. Just play the youth. What's the point of playing Bates Diop who's like 28? DSJ, McCall sets the feet on the outside. Took a dribble and then gave it to DSJ on the other wing. We've got five to shoot. Dennis drives. Great bounce pass. Walker hasn't missed in the quarter, but he has now. If he had have scored that wide open three, that's 13 in the quarter for him. 
but he's got 10. First miss on five shots. Cunningham moves into the mid-range. It's off. Clowney with the contest, and he gets the rebound as well. So he's just doing a lot of good on the court for this team. And he's barely played. Finney Smith, catch and shoot three. It's off for Duran. And now the uh, Nets will have to play defense. I'll tell you what. Just got to keep getting stops. Clowney's doing a good job. He knocks away another pass. Stewart's too big, too strong for Finney Smith there. And he was on an island as well. So Pistons have scored the last couple of points. The Nets have only scored 12 points in the paint to the Pistons 30. So it's pretty clear where the shot profile's coming from. McCall on the move. The three is good. And he cuts the lead back down to three. So McCall's found his shot from the outside as well. Ivy behind the back. Knocked away by DSJ. Good. And please call a timeout. Oh, come on. They've fucking called a jump ball. Are you serious? Bullshit. They've called a jump ball. Bro, they didn't even have their hands on the basketball. Has to be a timeout. Thank you. They're going to call the timeout. Thank fuck for that. So the Nets have really responded in this second quarter. We've scored 30 points and still three or just under three minutes to play. Wow. I've absolutely murdered my microphone there. I don't know if that's absolutely destroyed your eardrums or not, but um, the Nets trail by three. They trailed by 18 in the first quarter, so consider this an excellent response by the team. All things considered, we really should be up by a crap ton, but, um, I mean, you'd rather take the response over no response, of course. Um, Dennis Schroeder leading the way for the Nets. He's only taken five shots, but he's been highly efficient when he has. Um, and then Lonnie Walker off the bench, 13 points in the game, 10 of those in this quarter. Um, he's hit three threes. And um, Mikel Bridges also has only taken four shots, but he scored six. So I'm liking the sort of spread of scoring. We've also had nine assists in the quarter. The turnovers have gone down. And amazingly enough, if I had have told you that we were shooting like 16% for 10 minutes of the first quarter, given where we currently are positioned with us shooting 10 of 21 from three after starting, I think, two of nine, you would have called me crazy. I think we're six of nine this quarter from the outside. The Pistons, they started the game shooting 77% from the field, and those numbers have gone down very much so since the opening quarter. They still are hitting shots. Um, but not nearly as, as high of an efficiency as they were in the first half, and they're still turning the ball over a little. So um, definitely an opportunity in the second half for the lead to open up. I'm really loving the Noah Clowney minutes. He's only played four minutes, but he is a plus five in those minutes. He's got two steals, two dimes, and a rebound um, in those four minutes. So he's done a little bit of everything, even though the offensive element is probably not there. Um, he does space the floor, though. We can hit threes. So that is just another thing you include into the mix, um, which is a really good sign, of course. So no threes right now. They're taking themselves out the game. I don't know if you're talking about the Nets or the Pistons. I mean, the Nets are shooting the ball really well from the outside, so I would actually keep taking them. Um... Now, the thing is, the Nets have only got 12 paint points. So the real concern for me is if the threes stop happening, where are the buckets going to come from? Um, so I'm not really, like, as much as we're getting success, I'm not liking the balance. I think in the back half of the game, if threes are tougher to come by, I think that's going to be a concern. I cannot believe they've called this a jump ball. That really should have been our ball. Instead, DSJ is going to have the tall order of winning a jump ball over Isaiah Stewart, who's obviously got a crap ton more size. Yet, we're going to win the ball. Watford in the open floor drive. Layup is good. And DSJ turning dust into gold. Thompson in the corner will not shoot the three. He's not a high percentage three-point shooter, so he waits for Cunningham to arrive in the half court and now the handoff to Duran just outside the paint he's going to take it on and we have a foul off the ball and it's going the other way so the Nets have really turned things around clearly the far better team in the second quarter they've looked on the front foot 
They've made their shots. It's been a good in-game adjustment or in-game turnaround. Because usually if you start games slow, sometimes that can really plague you for the whole game. DSJ takes it in and the Nets of their first lead of the game. They trailed 26-8 to eight this time in the first quarter. And um, in one quarter, the space of one quarter, they've completely erased that deficit. And they now lead by one. Ivy, trapped. Cunningham, Thompson, three. Dared to shoot. It rims out the board by Claxton. And now DSJ will bring it up as we enter the final two minutes. Watford, the handoff to Mikel Bridges, is guarded by Ivy on the wing. Claxton, 1-2. Good cut by DSJ. He was held. No call. Claxton, the cut down the middle. Well worked. DSJ sort of waited for things to slow down and then flung the pass forward to Clax, who was the only one really making movement off the ball. He honoured the run. Clax scores the easy two-handed flush and the Nets lead by three. Cunningham, the drive, gets into the paint, the kick out to Ivy. He will drive and step back for two and he converts. So they desperately needed that bucket, the Pistons, because they've lacked it in this second quarter. Even though they've basically scored the same amount of points they did in the first quarter. Claxton the drive. It probably coincides with the pace we're playing at. A lot more possessions for the Nets in this quarter. A lot less turnovers. Claxton didn't pass it to the cutting bridges. DSJ in the mid-range. He banked it off the window. He definitely didn't call bank. But DSJ has actually scored quite a few buckets in this game. Which is a bit of a pleasant surprise. Thompson dared to shoot again. Watford trying to help one pass away. I mean, I understand that on the scouting report, that's probably what you're instructed to do. But why the fuck would you do that one pass away? Why would you sag off one pass away? DSJ, Watford, going to feed up Clax in the post, who's going to take on Thompson. And he didn't score, but there's going to be a foul on Thompson. And Clax will head to the free throw line. Um... Well, the Pistons were actually saved by the whistle there because if that's not called a foul, Clax has got an easy two on the offensive glass because Thompson was completely discarded from the play. So Clax at the line, shooting these free throws at a very, very good percentage recently, but I'm probably going to jinx him and give the commentators curse here. Um, every single time you, you seem to say something good, he misses. And what did I fucking just say? He misses the first free throw. <laughs> So, Fontecchio back in, the Italiano. And, um, any other changes? Don't believe so. So, interestingly enough, Watford is playing to close this second half. Or second quarter, first half. Um, Clax at the line. One more free throw. Please convert so I can just have the satisfaction of seeing us with the lead. And he does. So, the Nets lead by one. Having outscored the Pistons by 11 in the quarter. It's Cunningham on the outside. He's going to look to execute the two-for-one, but DSJ knocked it away. Got the steal. Lob. Claxton, it's way too far ahead of him. And then he's fucking hit it off the backboard. DSJ, I don't understand how he can be so good yet so shit at lobs. That one, that one was in between a lob pass and a normal pass that it just, yeah... I think with those sort of sequences, if that pass is too difficult to execute, you've just got to slow the play down. You had the time on your side. Um, instead, it's a terribly executed two-for-one, even though it could have been a two-for-one. If we actually scored, it would have been a great play. Great sequence. Ivy couldn't bank it in. Rebound by Watford. So good stop there by the Nets. Watford's going to take it inside and score off the window over two. And we've got two seconds to play. Second quarter, the Pistons will have to take it the length. Cunningham will get it from the inbounds. Puts one up at three-quarter court. Oh, my God, that was close. And that's half time. So the Nets score 41 points in the second quarter. That is an excellent first half. Or second quarter, should I say. We don't talk about the first 10 minutes of this game. Amazingly enough, this team had eight points with two and a half minutes left in the second quarter. From that point on, in 14 minutes... They went out and scored 49 points. Great end to the first half. Great final 14 minutes. Awful first 10. Um, Pistons scored 28, but um, pretty clearly, even though their offense wasn't awful in this quarter, it was, well, it was the, um, the defense that really left a lot to be desired for the Pistons in this second quarter. The Nets 
Amazingly enough, they started the game 3 of 16. They are shooting 55% from the field in this game. Don't ask me how it's turned around this quickly, but every single starter plus Lonnie Walker off the bench has been great. Um, nearly every starter scored a three-pointer, which is also a, an awesome sign. DSJ's got nine points. I did not expect him to take the most shots out of any starter. I didn't also expect him to have three steals, three dimes, nine points. He's actually been pretty positive, um, but he really should have been playing off the bench. Um, Lonnie Walker, only 12 minutes, is a bit of a crime. Um, but DSJ is... He did lift in the second quarter, much like a ton of other Nets players. Um, Plax with the steal and a block. You know, even Noah Clowney, four minutes, two steals, loving those minutes, two dimes, turning, you know, defense into offense. It was great to see. We had four assists at quarter time. We had 11, 11 in the quarter. I don't know why it just sounded like that. 11 points in the quarter or 11 assists in the quarter and the turnovers well down after we seemed to really enjoy turning the ball over in the, uh, in the first half or in the first quarter, at least. For the eight turnovers though, the seven steals is really idealistic. Um, Trent and Watford back end of the quarter really responded well after turning the ball over twice, simply by traveling. Um, Overall, though, we clean up the turnovers. We keep this offense going. It is going to be an easy win. Because, man, Detroit, I mean, they had a lot of momentum in the first quarter. Didn't really put us to the sword. The fact they were only up 10 at quarter time was sort of a bit baffling to me, um, given the way we started the game. And you know what? Like, I think the same thing happened in the Philly game as well. We started very slowly in that game, yet we're only down by by a deficit that was very easy to come back from um, if you just really knuckled down and, and got on a run. And, and that's what we did in that game as well. So um, I think it's going to be really imperative now that we really hammer down on what we did in the second quarter and continue that through. So at three quarter time, you're up 12 to 15 points. And that means that you, you hopefully can close the game out and not, and not end the game the way you started. Um, so, yeah, really good outputs, though. Lonnie Walker had um, 10 points in the quarter. He also only missed one of his five shots in that time. So, good to see. McCall, even though he's not scoring the ball, I mean, he is shooting it at a good percentage. He's at five dimes, which is a great sort of um, thing to see from him as well. So, um, really, really happy with the way he's performed in that first half. I think defensively he's been much more active and alert, even though the steals and blocks wouldn't really suggest that. Um, Detroit, they started the game on an absolute tear. Um, their three-point percentage and field goal percent percentage is still really good. Um, but it is much lower than what it was in the first quarter. Um, they were 10 of 13. Since that point, they've gone um, 12 of 29. So... Fair to say that they've sort of leveled out. They've had 12 turnovers in the first half. So that is one area that's really let us back into the game. Um, there's not too many games you're going to see where a team wins off the back of having 12 turnovers in a half. And and by that pace, 24 turnovers in a game. It's going to be incredibly difficult to do, um, even for the percentage you're shooting the ball at. So um, right now, 42 um, apiece. Um, yeah, 42 apiece in terms of shot selection. Um, we've had more threes made. Free throws hasn't been a very big staple of the game. Um, so look, I think, yeah, there's plenty of, plenty of work to be done still. Um, but you know what? I'm pretty optimistic about what there is to come. Um, so right now there are the team comparisons, um, which is awesome to see. And, uh, yeah, that is the situation at the moment. Amazingly enough, we are equal for points per game this season. I can't believe that. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to be really, I'll, I'll be back. I'm just going to quickly, um, I'll leave the, uh, team stats up and the scores and all that. Um, I will be back in just a second. I'm just going to grab, do a water bottle refill. And, um, yeah, then we'll be right to go, ready to rock and roll for the second half. Thanks for tuning in. If you are enjoying, by the way, make sure to drop a like and subscribe. We'll be back in two days for um, Nets versus Charlotte. So make sure to tune in for that for sure. 
Um, and then the day after that, we'll be doing Nets Cleveland. So plenty of basketball in the next four days, three days. Um, so make sure to tune in. We'll be covering all of those. But yeah, I'll be back in just a minute. Um, stand by. All right, we are back. Okay. All righty, so what, what are your thoughts for the first half? Let me know all of that. Um, yeah, it's... I'm, I'm pretty happy with this showing um, at the moment. Uh, given the start, it was fucking abysmal, if I'm being completely honest. Um, they just never, ever again need to do that starting lineup for god's sake amazingly enough another reason we probably should be a little bit further in front um amazing to say that bit rich saying that given given we um were down 18 in the first quarter but we need um desperately need the rebounding to to sort of resuscitate a little bit because we have just been smashed on the boards um and even more so on the offensive glass. A lot of second chance points for Detroit. Um, we'll actually have a look at the stat line here. Um, okay, let's have a look. So the Nets, um, let's have a look. So points off turnovers, 20 to 9. We have been absolutely putting them to the sword. Um, points in the paint, 30 to 20. Um, we wrestled that back at the back end of the quarter. Um, seven fast break points, but the Pistons, 14 second chance points to two. So for the seven offensive rebounds, they're basically getting a score every single time they get an offensive rebound. Um, so if you're getting an offensive rebound, best or... If you're giving away an offensive rebound, best believe you have to be absolute, absolutely sprinting to run the Pistons off the line because they've had a lot of open three-pointers because of the offensive rebounds they get, um, and that's primarily because we commit all our numbers to getting a rebound that when we don't, we inevitably give away a ton of wide-open shots lining the other uh, perimeter. So, yeah, that's the um the real situation I think we're we're, we're dealing with here. Um, going into the second half. That's one area we definitely have to wrestle back, but really good that we've been able to respond um, because it really could have turned sour very early on in this game. Um, but we've done a good job of, um, yeah, wrestling the game back. And um, hopefully this is all, it's all a turnaround. Um, yeah. It's, um, it's a complete turnaround. We don't, it's not just a turnaround within the space of a quarter. It's just a turnaround that, you know, sustains itself for the whole game. Um, 
All righty. Ooh, we okay. So I think it's fair to say we have to, um, I think it's fair to say that, yeah, this, this comeback, I actually didn't know if the Nets had it, um, had it in, had it in them. Um, yeah, but fair play, fair play. Um, okay. The Clowney experiment is all about whether we need to re-sign Clax or not. We might have Dayron and Noah as our centers. I'm, um, I'm not linking, um, I'm not linking Noah Clowney's future to Clax's because Noah Clowney is not a five. He's a four. I, I sort of see him not saying he's going to be anywhere near as good. But sort of similar to Evan Mobley, I mean, it's it's sort of like a like that one-two punch. I mean, I, I, Evan Mobley can't shoot per se, and neither can Jared Allen, but they're very very good defenders. If you had Claxton and Clowney as a front court two, and hope Clowney can shoot the ball well, then that is just I mean that's an an excellent future front court to have. Like, that's a... Theoretically, if you want to play lanky as hell, Noah Clowney could be that guy to sort of fill the Evan Mobley kind of position. I feel like that would make... That makes a fair bit of sense. Um, we've still got um, 24 minutes to play. I don't know how many more uh, Noah Clowney minutes we're going to get. He only played the four minutes, but... Yeah, we... We need to, like, absolutely put the hammer down in this third quarter. I say it time and time again. That is, they call it the Premiership quarter for a reason. Um, so, yeah, it's pretty essential that, you know, the game's going to be won in that quarter. All righty. So we're probably about a minute or so away from the second half. Um, keys to the game in the second half for me. Clean up the offensive rebounds or like don't give them away. Do not have another 10-minute stint where you score eight points. That'd be great. Do want to see us attack the basket a little bit more. Um, and I think, yeah, defense has been pretty strong. Um, especially in that second quarter. So I think that'll be a great foundation for, well, um, winning this game for sure. That's why we got 41 points in the second quarter. A lot of those off turnovers had 20 in the entire first half off turnovers. So, you know, we've got to keep focusing on that being the foundation of the rest of our game. Amazing we scored 57 points in that first half. Usually, if we're scoring eight in ten minutes, we're fucking struggling. Struggling. So, some good games next week. We play the Cavs, the Magic, the Pacers, the Spurs all next week. So, we'll be doing a couple of those games. Um, I believe the Indy and Spurs games we'll be doing at the back end of the week. Not the ones in the middle of the week. Um, we also will be doing... Our first neutral watch along where I'm going to do Philly, Milwaukee. Hopefully Maxi is playing. Because that may make it a bit more of an interesting game. So we've started this second half and the Nets have given it to Bridges for the first play of offense. Flings it out to Schroeder for three. Bro, he cannot miss from the outside. 
It's a bit unhealthy how well he's playing at the moment from the outside. Four three-pointers without a miss. He's an absolute sniper at the moment. Thompson. Pass off to Cunningham on the outside. Blackston on the switch is guarding the kick out to Ivy, who will drive on Schroeder. Good rotation across. One more for Duran, and they run out of time. That is excellent teamwork there. I think Finney Smith was the man who covered off the Jaden Ivy drive, and that meant that they had to overuse the basketball a little bit longer than they would have liked. And uh, the Nets will have the ball here. They have gone 77% from the field since starting. 19% from the field in this game. What an unbelievable turnaround. Finney Smith steps back for three. Oh my God, if he made that, we may have had to just, we may have had to just like wrap it up right there because I don't, I don't think Finney Smith has that in, in his, uh, I didn't think he had that in his, in his locker. Lax actually probably should have been fouled or given the benefit of a foul call there. He was getting held. Thompson on the outside had Walker in the air, who's starting the second half during the easy jam. So thank fuck we started the second half with Lonnie on the floor. You'd be an absolute fool to do otherwise. Schroeder, oh my God, the spin cycle and the conversion. Absolutely lost his defender, turned on the burners. I was able to score easily. Cunningham, the quick response. The two-handed flush with no defensive presence under the basket for the Nets there. So it allowed an easy drive and a good conversion there. So now the Nets lead by four. Schroeder nearly lost the handle. Blackston does well and got the bounce to go. So capitalized on that mismatch he had under the basket. It was Cunningham that time. And Schroeder with the feed. Duran, the pass to Thompson. Good pirouette, created the space, but was well short on that mid-range and aboard by Claxton. And now Dennis Schroeder will get it to Walker. What a defensive breakdown. Walker was so, so wide open. Yet, it seems like the most wide open shots we can't convert. Because, yeah, that was shocking. Cunningham, the no-look pass, and there was a foul, and that was just unnecessary. What the fuck is Claxton doing, bro? That's just a dumb, dumb technical. This guy keeps on, game after game, giving away technical fouls for no fucking reason. It doesn't help that we have an old fart while officiating this game, but... Oh, God. Where is the foul there? There was no foul there. They fucking bailed him out. What a joke of a foul to call. So those sort of things can swing the, the momentum. I mean, Walker had the open three, didn't convert... Then you probably got the stop, but it's actually been deemed a technical. Claxton sent it to another planet. They got two to shoot. Thompson puts one up and he nearly banked it in. Of course, we can't get the fucking offensive rebound because that'd be too easy. Thompson, Ivy, screen, switch, drive, mid-range, pull up, got it. So they've gotten three points out of nothing. A technical foul and second chance points. Come on now. Schroeder. Pass to Bridges. That's the area we need to clean up. We're giving them way too many points for that shit. Bridges has Thompson on the back shoulder. Steps back for two. I don't know why he didn't just drive it into the paint when he had the defender on his back shoulder. That would have been a no-brainer. Cunningham, driving kick. Thompson, open three. It's good. I would call a timeout. I would have called a timeout right there, there and then. But Kevin Ollie's going to try, see if they can play through it. If we if we can see the, on the other end and don't score on this side, I definitely can see Kevin Ollie calling a timeout. Yeah, you have to call it. We've just turned it over. Knocked away there by Bridges. He was able to slow up the fast break after that steal by the Pistons. Thompson again. That's a bad, bad shot. 
Walker with the board. Now Schroeder. Drive. Gets into the paint. Well held there. The switch, though. He's got Durin guarding him on the outside. Schroeder's going to cook here. And another layup. He's absolutely killing on that matchup. He's too quick. And um, Ivy is going to get fouled on that drive. And they're just fucking calling fouls for the, the fun of it. So many fouls are just not there for the Pistons. This quarter, they've been getting the run of the grain. So, foul here for the... Or, foul by the Nets. And the Pistons manufacture that. Or a couple of free throws here. So, second quarter, they couldn't really get to the line. In this game, they... Or in this quarter, they have. Noah Clowney's coming into the game. So, four and a half minutes in, and it looks like Kevin Ollie has liked what he's seen from Noah Clowney in that first half. So much so, he's one of the first to come off the bench. DSJ is into the game, and um, so it's Walker and Claxton going to the bench. DSJ in with Noah Clowney. 7.30 to play in the third. And the free throw by Ivy is good as he ties the game with two makes. So 7.33 to play in the third. I would say the Pistons have been the better team in the quarter for sure. Clowney, hand off to DSJ. Drive. Out to Finney Smith and now Schroeder who's going to try drive on Jaden Ivey, and he scores again off the window. Bro, DS... Or not DSJ, Dennis Schroeder is absolutely frying. Frying the Pistons, bro. They don't know how to handle him. Ivey on the outside, the drive and kick. Cunningham, the catch and shoot three, is off. Good box out by Clowney. Finney Smith was able to get it uncontested as a result. And now Schroeder, one two with Finney Smith. Trying to lose his defender. He's now got Stewart on him in a switch. He's going to drive it. Nope. Shoots a three. It nearly went in. And a board by Duran. But I would not like that to be a shot that's um that becomes habit. Clowney went over with the rotation and was pulled for the foul. And Ivy will get a couple of free throws. We're going to get a timeout. But, bro, Dennis, Dennis Schroeder has been cooking in this third quarter here. Um, the Nets lead by two, but they um, will return to the game having given away free throws. Um, the Pistons. Let's have a look. So Schroeder's got 21 points. He is spearheading the attack. He has only taken nine shots, or I think they haven't counted one yet. Um, he's got 21 in the game, and he's got four dimes. After a slow start, my guy has been on an absolute tear. Um, the Nets, I don't think, have turned it over in this third quarter, which is a great sign to see. Um, overall, shooting the ball really, really well. 56%. The Pistons, though, um, I mean, their three-point percentage is down, but it's the offensive rebounds keeping them in this one. And, and they've gotten a few free throws here in this third quarter as well, which is sort of supplementing their scoring output. So... Um, the Nets, I'll tell you what, those Claxton technical fouls always kill our momentum, um, which is re which is really frustrating, for sure. Um, if you are enjoying the stream, make sure to drop a like and uh, sub subscribe if you are new as well. Um, we'll be back for Nets versus the... Who? The um, Hornets in a couple of days. Another ad? I mean, they're only going at half an hour intervals so i'll turn them off when it is uh if it is a close game i'll turn them off um so there's no interruptions for the end of the game of course um all right so man dennis Schroeder, bro he's been a gun um walker has not scored in the quarter um, the Pistons, I mean, they've been decent, decent enough in this third quarter. Duran's already got the 10 rebounds. Um, you look at who's getting the offensive boards for them. It's been a real mixture. So 
I think it's it's down to a more mindset thing. It isn't down to a personnel issue. Um, these players have absolutely got to hustle on the boards. Got to get that positioning right because far too often, it just seems like we're always in the wrong place, wrong time. Um, so 68 to 66, Schroeder remains in the game because of course he's just been on fire. He scored nine points in this quarter already. And we're only at the halfway stage of the quarter. He has hit five of his, or four of his five shots. Claxton is back in. I don't know why Clowney's playing in like three minute spurts. He's playing really well when he's on the court. Um, but it looks like he's gone to the bench here. So it gave Clax a bit of relief. Um, probably because Clax gave away the technical. So probably a bit of, you know, pent up frustration. Um, from some shit that hasn't been going his way. I think it was ta like a tactical move to um, for Kevin Ollie to get him to the bench, regroup, and get him back on the court so he's, he can reset, hard reset. So free throws, good there by Ivy. And um, the game is tied at 68 apiece. Just a little bit over half a quarter to play in this third. It's now Schroeder on the outside, picked up by Fontecchio. So they've made that. Well, personnel change. Finney Smith is open for three in the corner. It's off. And a board here for Cade Cunningham. Picked up by Finney Smith. Do not give him the space. The drive. The reverse. It's off. Didn't get the angle. And the Nets have the numbers. DSJ. Out to Schroeder. Back to DSJ. McCall is barely getting any touches in this game. He's going to get one now. He's going to step back for three. I don't know if I like that, but he's, he scored it anyway. And um, the net's up three. McCullough's hit three threes in this game. That's where all his points have come from. Jalen Wilson is getting ready to check in at the scorer's table. Fontecchio lost his footing. DSJ got a steal. The net's of the numbers. DSJ, what is he doing? Very, very slow trying to attack. What is he doing? And then he gets the steal again. The second time this game, he's fucked it up on the offensive end. Here's a three. It's badly off again. Mate, that's the second time he's just... Oh, my God. What are we, do what are we doing? Fontecchio, the drive. Swatted by Claxton. So many defensive stops here. But the Nets, I mean, probably are leaving a few points on the table. DSJ, for example... You got the fast break sequence. Actually attack the basket instead of playing so passive and letting them get back. Doesn't make sense to me. Schroeder's going to cook on Stewart here. The bounce pass to Claxton. There's a foul under the basket on Ivy, who was guarding Clax. And obviously the size is, well, the size is not pretty there. You know, for Detroit, they had a lot to contend with on the inside. So Clowney is in the game. And it looks like Claxton's going off again. I just want to see what happens if we play Clax, um, not Clax, Clowney at the four and have Claxton at the five. I think the spacing will be a bit shit, but Clowney can shoot the ball, can't he? So we've got a G League front court here with Clowney and Wilson in the game. Schroeder, DSJ, behind the back, drive, stop shooting, fucking mid rangers, bro. Wilson, the offensive board, he scores for two. Offensive rebounds have not been a strength today, but uh, J-Dub prides himself on that. So good to see him getting on the board and scoring a couple. Thompson is open on the wing. We're playing zone, so we're going to allow that. Although allowing Cunningham an open three is not what I'm going to tolerate. Bridges gives away an offensive board. Fontecchio missed the uh, put back two. Ivy is an open three and he hits. How many fucking times are you going to give away an offensive rebound? Mikel that time. You had the positioning, but you allowed a man to leap across or get over the top. Good work by Schroeder and Mikel hangs and scores for two. Schroeder brought multiple sources of attention there and it allowed a pretty uncontested cut there for Mikel Bridges, and now a turnover there by Stewart, who commits the illegal screen on Mikel. Fournier will check in, and Trenton Watford will also come into the game. So, 
God, we are looking like a pretty inconsistent team in some areas and pretty well refined on the offensive end when we don't turn it over and actually give ourselves the opportunity to, you know, get these get these possessions because we give away so many extra opportunities when we can't secure the boards. So many open floor opportunities, should I say. Bridges again for three. That one's off. You knew it as soon as he took it. So, Nets up four. Cunningham, the uh, step back, was not on. Pump fake. Fontecchio going to feed Stewart. He's got Clowney on him. Good cut by Fontecchio. Good contest by Clowney. Where the fuck is the box out? Oh, my God, bro. Every possession. Watford the Euro. He lost the ball. Didn't get the foul. Fournier in transition. How many times, man? Oh, my God. You can't make this up. We get a fucking opportunity for a steal, and it goes off Watford's back, who just enters the area. Fontecchio is down, um, holding his face, so I don't know what's going on there. Um, 75 to 73, the score. My goodness, this quarter's been back and forth. Um, why can't I show the actual game? Because copyright, that would completely defeat the purpose of doing this. I might as well not be here if you could watch the game. Um, it's just so frustrating. We've had so many chances to just hammer down on this lead. Leaving a bit on the table. The rebounding is grinding my gears right now because that's what made us lose against Memphis. All those offensive rebounds. The Pistons lead rebounds by 18, bro. 18. Yet we still have a three-shot advantage on them, which is sort of baffling to me. Um, Walker hasn't scored in the quarter. Schroeder has not scored um, in the last couple of minutes. So um, I need to see a little bit more balance here. I need to see us, you know, continuously feeding the hot hand. The good thing is the turnover's down for us. Um, the Pistons are down under 50%, but it is their rebounds. That's what That's what's keeping them in this game. And I'll continue to preach that. And it's really frustrating when, yeah, you don't have the, um, like, Mikel Bridges, the amount of times he has allowed offensive rebounds, just doing my head in. Really, you're not six foot one, you're six foot six. If I was six foot six tall, I would be doing a better job than, um, than what Mikel Bridges has been doing. For sure. Um, so yeah, interesting sort of situation we find ourselves in going into the fourth. Um, we're still got three minutes to play. So as I continuously say, it is so, so important for this quarter to end on a positive note. So you can carry over the positives. Um, you can carry over the positives into the final quarter and really hammer down on that lead right now. It is, um, proving to be a little bit difficult for us apparently to to get that that space opening up um <clears throat> still a long way to go as we saw um from this stage of the first quarter through to the end of the half the first half we scored like 49 points you know which is ridiculous Um, God, Fontecchio has been absolutely pelted in the face by a Watford elbow on the previous sequence. Fournier open under the basket, lost it, got it back. The kick out to Cunningham. It's a pump fake and an open three and he hits. Oh God, I cannot be asked actually having to play proper meaningful last quarter minutes against the fucking Pistons. DSJ had his shot blocked there by Wiseman. They get it ahead to Thompson. It's an easy dunk. What a good response at the back end of this third quarter by the Pistons. They have scored the last seven points. So. 2.20 to play.
So Pistons up three. Definitely had the better of us in this quarter. Plenty of possessions we could have capitalized. I don't know where Lonnie Walker is. He's about to check in now, as I say that. Bridges got open numbers. Bounce pass to Wilson in the corner. Good close out there. Wilson's going to have to put one up, and he's short. The board by Wiseman. So back end of the quarter, really struggled for offense. We've struggled as a whole in this quarter offensively. Only the 18 points. Cunningham, the pass to Thompson. He faked the pass, and then he traveled, and he was getting ready to absolutely rattle the rim, which he did, but the whistle had already blown. So... Another turnover there for Detroit. And um, for all the offensive rebounds they're getting, they're really throwing away a number of possessions off the back of all these turnovers. They've had 17 of those in the game. So looks like we're going to see a sub, I think. Black's back in for Clowney. Schroeder back in. Walker back in. So Kevin Ollie sensing that we probably just need a little bit of offense to fuel us into the uh, final quarter. You probably want the lead going into the last. We just need to get a couple of stops on one end, score on the other side. So DSJ to the bench with that all in mind. Bridges. Screen. Gets into the paint. Got tripped up. And a turnover. I don't know why McCall... Why the fuck is McCall actually handling the rock when we have Schroeder on the court who's absolutely cooked? I don't get it. And we have Walker as well. Bridges is not a creator. He gets trapped under the basket. It's going the other way. What the fuck? Or no, it's not. He was sign signaling as if it was going to be Pistons ball. Mikel looking like a clown every time he dribbles the basketball, man. He's been so much better off the ball today. When he's barely taking touches. Schroeder, 116 to play in this, in this third quarter. Wilson, good drive, good spin. Schroeder gets by Fournier, the lob. Not there. They read it. Wiseman did. Cunningham on the break. The pass to Wiseman. Oh, my God. What a terrible end to this fucking third quarter, bro. Two plus one. Mate, I cannot believe this. They've scored the last 12 points of the game, or 11 points. And this is the importance of a run. We did not capitalize in this third quarter when we had the opportunity to, and the Pistons, man, they've just really knuckled down. And they're going to go into three-quarter time with a lot of confidence and a very good lead. Very handy lead. Wiseman, the free throw is good. And um, I'm pretty pissed off, if I'm going to be honest, because how does this team turn a... Well, we were up about two and a half minutes ago, and we've given away 12 consecutive points, purely off all these transition points. Schroeder hits another three. You can always count on him to knock down a big shot because he's been making threes for fun, um, which is no secret, of course. Cunningham... Pass to Wiseman. Going to go down low and shoot over Claxton. Oh, my God. Are you fucking kidding me? What an absolute putback dunk there by Thompson. But, again, no one is boxing out. No one. Did you not get the message from the fucking Memphis game? Schroeder to Lonnie Walker. Shake and bake. And he hits a three as well. He's been a sniper as well in this game. The Pistons will have one look at it, but I beg, you do not give away second chance points, for Christ's sake. Cunningham the drive, the step back two, it's off, get the board, oh my god, they've got 1.6 to get a shot up. Second chance points have plagued us all game, and they've got another opportunity here. If that's a signal of anything, it's that we're going to concede right here, right now. Here we go. 1.6. Please cover the man, and it's knocked away, and it's going to expire the clock. So three-quarter time, and I think those two three-pointers there by Schroeder and Walker were very important in sort of getting rid of that momentum that the Pistons did have to close out that third quarter because they scored 12 
on the trot and we did well to, well, cancel that out just a little bit at the end of the quarter, sort of dampen the pain. We trail going into the last, but at least it's only a four point deficit as opposed to maybe an eight or 10 point deficit, which is what it was shaping up to be um, until Walker and Truda hit those couple of threes to just slow them down a little bit. We only scored 24 points in that third quarter. Pretty disappointing um, to sort of rock up the way we did. But in the last quarter, we've got a lift, man. Really got a lift. The Pistons have... Well, look, I think this was the real issue. Schroeder not getting enough touches in the final couple of minutes. He's going to be huge going into the fourth. Um, He's had the equal most assists. He's got clearly the most points. Um, we're going to need to see more of McCall in the last, whether that is more facilitating or getting points. Um, Klax may get some looks. Need to stop turning it over because we had a couple at the back end of the quarter. Um, maybe need to get to the free throw line just a little bit more. Um, yeah, that's probably a couple of things I have to note. From a Pistons perspective, Cunningham actually hasn't shot the ball well. Um, Thompson's got 14 and Ivy's got 21. The big issue is the rebounding. They've got uh, 13 offensive boards and they out-rebound us by 21. That is just embarrassing, really. Um, and they've had more free throws as well. Um, so, look, the turnovers that they have conceded, the amount of turnovers compared to us, is keeping us in this game. Um, and that's the reason the shots are very, very similar, even though, um, you know, the rebounding is just so big of a disparity. Um, we've also made more three-pointers, which is really helping us out in that respect. But last quarter got to ensure that we don't give away all these fast break points off turnovers. Um, got to get those open looks and got to box out. I don't care what's happened in the previous three quarters. You absolutely need in this last quarter to not give them any inch. You cannot allow them to get these open looks because you can't simply defend on the glass. We're, we're just not doing a good job. Doing a rubbish job in terms of boxing out. It's not rocket science. It's just... It, it should not take a genius to work this one out. Like, use your fucking brain. Use your brain, gents. So, Nets down by four, and we're seeing Malachi Flynn play for the first time tonight, which is an interesting move there by Monty Williams. Playing over Marcus Sasser. So, obviously, they didn't like the Sasser minutes in the first half. They're going to try something a bit different here. Flynn to Ivy, the drive he got by. Claxton got the block. Oh, my God, it's gone off Ivy, and it's going the other way. So, he successfully knocked it off Wilson, although the problem was it went back off Ivy. So, not... Um, not how you would have drawn it up. And so now the Nets will consider that a good stop and um, now be able to get into a set. So true to the drive. That's a foul. And he gets it to go. He's on fire. He's got 26 in the game. And whilst many others have been passengers today, Schroeder has just been on one. And uh, he had Fournier in a lockup, and um, all he needed to do was get a shot up, and it would have been a foul, a shooting foul. So Schroeder gets to the free throw line alongside getting those two to go. He can cut the deficit down to one with a make, and he does. And so the Nets trail 85 84. First minute, last quarter. Ivy feeds Wiseman down low. What is Claxton fucking doing? Bro, this is a joke. Claxton, bro, he's, he's been awful. I actually think he's been the worst. He's actually been, I reckon, the worst man at center today. He's just not been good enough. On this side of the ball, even though he's got a ton of blocks, he's not been good enough. Far too many points conceded. Played a fair bit of drop. It's fucking James Wiseman. He's an absolute flop. And not, like, falls over a ton. He's just shit. He's just shit. Schroeder, great skip pass to Walker. What a find. 
And unfortunately, the three is off, but we couldn't get the rebound. See, the Pistons would be turning those misses into offensive boards. Been far more tenacious on that end. Ivy on the outside. Why is DSJ going under screens? Why is he going under screens, bro? Let's see what response we got in us. We trailed by eight in the last last game. That's got to be a foul. Thank fuck for that, because I swear to God, that old fart sitting on the baseline wasn't going to call a foul. And if he didn't, that would have been an absolute, absolutely farcical decision. So two free throws here for DSJ. And he rattles home the first. We just can't let this game get away. Finney Smith is back in the game early. And I would assume he's going to play very much the rest of the game. J-Dub to the bench, who hasn't had the greatest of games. That's made by DSJ. So Ivy getting pressed here by DSJ in the backcourt. Now the pass there to Wiseman. Ivy the drive. Gets one up and there's another foul. Ivy has been cooking in this third or um in this second half, third quarter going into the fourth. He's just been getting to the line time and time again. We haven't really found an answer. He's just so explosive. And DSJ's got five personals as well. So don't really know how we're gonna counteract this going forward. I think Mikel's getting ready on the side to come onto the, the court. Ivy makes the first, and sometimes he's a bit on and off with the free throws, but today he's been on point. I don't think he's missed. I don't think any one of the Pistons have missed. So 10-26 to play in this game, and we're down six. So, man, we've... I mean, it's it's the ball is in the Nets court right now. They can either rock up in this last quarter and actually legitimately fight, the rest of the way, or they can just play second fiddle and, and and let the Pistons dictate the game. Claxton does well there to force his way in, and he's fouled there by Wiseman. Would have liked to have seen Claxton actually face the basket when he was putting that up. Instead, it was just a really blind sort of layup attempt. He will get the free throws, though. Just got to get stops. That is the number one thing for this team. It all stems off there, and we haven't really done that a great deal in this second half. Claxton makes the first free throw and continues this strong form from the free throw line. Thompson is back in. He's been solid for Detroit. Fournier to the bench. It's a long way to go, but I would say the Pistons, it's their game to lose, but the Nets definitely can peg this one back for sure. So Clax makes both. And Ivy will bring it forward for Detroit. So switch. Ivy picked up by Claxton. Now the high screen. We're, we're playing under the screen again, bro. Bro, are you going to fucking play defense on this bloke or what? Oh, my God. It's just open look after open look, man. Finney Smith going to drive. The layup is good. Nice drive. Opening was there. Wiseman had sort of committed to Claxton more so under the basket. Was waiting for the dump off, but it never happened. That's got to be an offensive foul, and Schroeder will draw it. And Wiseman is going to be the uh, guilty party. So these have to be converted into scores on our on our end, on our offensive end. Has to be. Yeah, Wiseman's definitely moving there. That is always going to be an illegal screen. So, Nets trailing by six. Really got to chip away here. Schroeder going to weave through and shoot the mid-range. And that is a excellent-looking rainbow jumper. He's barely missed today. I can't actually recall the uh, occasions he's missed. He's been on one. Fontecchio to the corner for Thompson. Given a bit of space. Flynn on the outside. The screen and switch. The drive. Falling out of play. It's a loopy pass to Thompson. It got to him, though. And he's going to have to put one up. 
and he rim grazes and a good stop by the Nets. Schroeder does well there to not give away a foul and the Nets now need to capitalize here. Convert these stops. Schroeder, high screen by Bridges. We feed Claxton under the basket. There's another foul there. I don't know if it's Thompson or Ivy. It's going to be more free throws though in Claxton. Um, with the way he's been shooting free throws, obviously you think of past history where he can't make a free throw for dear life, but recent form would suggest that he will make these. He's been really, really solid from the free throw line last, you know, three, four, five games, although that free throw is off. Can't make them all. Duran is back in. And Wiseman is out. So 8.43 to play in this final quarter. Cannot leave a lot of points on the table for sure. Claxton at the line. He's had a couple of trips. And the second free throw now lined up is good. And he splits the pair. So back down to a single possession deficit. There's no Cunningham on the floor as of yet in this last quarter. You've got to absolutely capitalize there. Ivy nearly lost the handle during the easy jam. Oh my God. <sighs> Fucking killing us in the paint, man. Claxton, got to take it in. Mikel, one more for Finney Smith. I'm, oh my God. We're going to overuse this, aren't we? Walker picks up his dribble and he traveled. McCall, you had an open three early in the clock. You should should have taken it. Or even Claxton should have tried a push shot. So 98-93. Pistons have responses every single time. Ivy into the paint. Knocked away. Walker, what are you doing? Bridges will get the steal. We fling it across court to Schroeder who will drive. The layup is good! He is... Ridiculous! That was a chuck-up of sorts. He scored 31 in the game. Extra feed there. Fontecchio on the move. It's off. Get the board. And we nearly had our, our own players spoil each other. But the Nets get the stop they need. Bridges the cut under the basket. Tried the reverse and he was fouled by Duran. And um, I wouldn't say that was a foul. But in the modern NBA, of course, they call that a foul. I'm not going to let my bias seep in there. I don't think it was a foul. If you are enjoying, make sure to drop a like and subscribe. If you are new, we'll be back for Nets Hornets in a couple of days time. Um, and then a day after that for Nets Cavaliers. So quite a bit of Nets basketball in the next couple of days. Um, make sure to tune in here if you want to hear an alternative call um, to the game. So Watford checks in, interestingly, at the 7.33 mark of the fourth. I don't know who he's replacing. I believe it's Lonnie Walker. Mikel Bridges had a quiet night offensively, but an efficient night. He's only taken the eight shots and made four. Bridges at the line. First free throws. Of course, he fucking made one of two because we can't have good things in life. Um, he's supposed to be a good free throw shooter, but he's had some god-awful free throw shooting games in recent memory. Ivy, what are you doing? So, so lucky. Schroeder's just not, like, so wide open. He's leaving him so wide open, one pass away. Then McCall turns it over, and then it... No way. I mean, Doe was able to stop the fast break after Bridges turned it over, but... <sighs> Look, Nets are in the bonus. 7-10 to play. You would be idiotic to not capitalize on this. And it looks like Kevin Ollie's going to challenge this because he reckons that there is a little grazing of the leg when the ball bypassed Thompson after Doe knocked it away. So it looks like the green light's on and the Nets are going to work to see if this challenge ends up in their favor. So currently, 7-10 to play in this final quarter. The Nets trail by two. Um, they have trailed for, well, a large portion of this game. Um, the Pistons are shooting at well, 50, 40, 90. Um, in fact, 50, 40, 100. And Jaden Ivey scored 29, which is just a bit cooked. Um, Cade Cunningham has got 10 and or 10 assists, and he's got 19 points, but he has been by far 
not one of their most efficient. Um, he's probably been their most inefficient given that volume, but he's still hit four threes on good efficiency. Um, the bad thing is they've turned it over 18 times for only 22 assists, but they have got 13 offensive rebounds and they actually are out rebounding us by 20. 42 to 22. The Nets are getting to the free throw line a little bit more. I don't think they've made a three in the last quarter, um, shooting 53% from the field. But look at the efficiency by Dennis Schroeder. I put him in the spotlight today, um, and he has just been absolutely superb. He's missed two of his 14 shots. He's hit five threes. He scored 31 in the game. It's only his second 30-point performance of the season, and that is the reason we're in this game. Um, purely off the back of that. Um, Clax has got 13 and seven. He's actually made five of his, of his seven free throws. So I would say that's a very good improvement by him. Um, and when you're taking half of our free throws, you need to convert at a pretty decent rate. Um, as for Mikel Bridges, unacceptable, only making one of your two free throws. He's already played 36 minutes and we've got three games in four nights. So if you really want to put his Iron Man title to the test, definitely this is um, a situation to put him in. But overall, very even sort of game here. The Pistons have had five more shots, though, than the Nets. Um, we've hit uh, three more three-pointers. Let's have a look at what happens here. Did it go off the uh, Pistons? I think it did. So it is going to be Nets ball, and we can tie the game here. Once, if this team takes the lead, there is no looking back. You cannot look back. Cannot look back. So, Schroeder, Clowney playing with Watford, Finney, Smith, and Bridges, the five on the floor right now, inbounded to McCall, and now Schroeder on the outside, the screen by Clowney, the pull-up two by Schroeder is off. That's his third miss of the game. And it's not a bad look, but I would have liked to have seen us take it all the way to the cup and see if we can test. Maybe draw multiple defenders. Cunningham moves into the mid-range, gets into the paint, the kick out to Thompson. The open three is off. Get the board. Clowney does well. Bounced it into the hardwood and got it to Schroeder, who has it now. He will drive. He had it knocked away. Now the screen used. The drive. Good cut by Watford. And he had to have been fouled because there's no way he's missing a layup that badly at like six foot eight tall. So two free throws here for Watford, making it happen with a nice cut. And that's why I wanted Schroeder to take it in on the previous possession because he's been drawing defenders all day long, especially with the efficiency at which he scored the ball. So it's a no brainer to take it all the way in. And Schroeder's will open up on the perimeter for you. And there'll be plenty of cuts on offer as well. So... Trennan Watford makes the first, and one more make would tie the game at 98 apiece. Second goes down, and he got the bounce. I thought he was off. So all tied up, all square, and this is not a position you want to be in against a, against a Pistons team who've only won nine games all season. Cunningham, drive. Oh, that's an excellent move there by Cunningham. Just hung in the air and was able to, you know, manipulate the layup a little bit to get an open look. Bridges the drive, goes baseline, shoots with the right hand. It's off and a rebound by Duran. Not sure if I'm a fan of that. Ivy, early offense. Duran to Cunningham on the wing. Switch. Bridges guarding. Drive. Layup. What? I would challenge that again. So Cunningham at the line. Let's have a look. That is pretty soft. That's pretty soft. And Clowney's going to go to the bench. Walker and Clax will check in. So I assume Watford's going to take a seat. Free throws for Cunningham. They still have not missed at the line. So 14 of 14 they are from the line. Watford to the bench. 
So 101 to 98. The Nets are really going to have to knuckle down on the defensive side. I've said it all second half. It's going to be tough. Pistons have got some really good offensive weapons out on the court. They'll end the game with their starters. The Nets will do the same, except they've got Walker on the court instead of DSJ, which is exactly the way we should have started the game. Bridges, Schroeder, picked up by Thompson. Good cut by Bridges, but it was knocked away. Pass wasn't precise, and Cunningham, oh my god, what a slam. Oh, we're really going to fucking lose to the Pistons, aren't we? <laughs> We've got a long way to go, but... Bro, six straight points for the Pistons. They got the, got the momentum. Schroeder, great feed to Walker. It's open and it rims out and a board for Detroit. So we're not knocking down the shots that we need to. And there's an open look for Ivy. He's going to hit it. There it is. Call the timeout. Fuck! I hate this team, man. Fuck's sake. Oh my god, bro. I cannot be fucking asked. This team sucks. Oh my god. Bro, this team drives me to insanity, mate. It would have fucking helped if you didn't start the game as bad as you did. But it also wouldn't have helped if you get outscored in the second half by this many points. Cannot be asked, bro. How does a team do this against Detroit? <sighs> Fucking hell. Jaden Ivey, of all players, to hit six three-pointers, bro. What a waste of a performance for Dennis Schroeder, man. Look at the percentage he's been shooting the ball at. <sighs> There's been... Oh, whoops. Probably busted up your eardrums again. Um... Like, there just hasn't been... not There's not been enough of a supporting cast in the second half. Like... Cannot be asked, Bro, Detroit. T 32 to Jaden Ivey, who's hit six threes. I guarantee you he's not shooting the ball well from three this season. And it, you know what? It all stems from the one fact that we haven't been able to rebound. We're getting out rebounded by fucking 22 boards. They've doubled our rebounding count. It's actually cooked. Let me have a look at what Jade and Ivy are shooting from three this season. And, and this really sums up Nets killers right here. There's always one specific player who decides to go batshit crazy. Jade and Ivy this season, 33.5%. On his career, 34%. And look at this. He's shooting 66% from three on nine attempts. You cannot make this shit up. <sighs> what an absolute surprise. Alrighty, let's see what we got. If you are enjoying the stream as much as you may not be enjoying the result, you're probably enjoying watching me lose my shit. Um, we'll be back in... We'll be back in how long? Two days for Nets Charlotte, where we'll probably... Probably disappoint again. Look, if, if you're not good enough to win these games, you don't deserve to make the play-in. Simply put. And, and I don't want us to make the play-in if this is the sort of basketball we're going to dish up. It's, it's on the players again. There's been countless times where this team has had to fight back from deficits. It happened last game. I think we were down eight at roughly the same time, time of the last quarter. Going to have to knuckle down here. Gonna have to score first here, and then you just have to get stops at every opportunity. Mikel, layup, can't even get the fucking angle. That is the last thing you want. And now Clax is guarding Cunningham when they've got two centers on the court. It's gonna this screams offensive rebound being conceded. Ivy on the outside. To Duran. The drive on Finney Smith. The turn, the scoop, doesn't get the angle. You've got to push the pace now. You have four and a half minutes. You've got to score nine points to make it up. And that's not even to win the game. Schroeder, the screen, the drive, skip pass, Walker open three. It's good. All right. That's a third of the points trimmed off. 
Four minutes to play. You're down six. You need to clamp. You need to clamp. Cunningham. Screen and switch. Duran had it knocked away by Claxton. Oh, God. Bridges is guarding Stewart under the basket. You've got to help him out. You've got to help him out. It's just too easy. Mate, what are these players doing? You've... I don't even give a shit if you're going to give the three up. Oh, my God. It's a jump ball. Can't make this shit up. The guys that should be performing, a.k.a. Claxton, a.k.a. Bridges, they just have not been good enough today. Claxton, no, nah, I'm not having it. Even though he's had four blocks, I'm not having it. And Mikel, most, most importantly. So the Pistons can win their 10th game of the season. They're three and a half minutes away from doing so. They've just got to ensure that they don't, well, fluff it, quite frankly. They've, they've, it's their game to lose. If they lose this game, it is all on them. Ball is won by the Pistons. So, got a real opportunity here, the Pistons. A score here would be incredibly handy, and I would say it probably is going to seal off the game. You got to get the stop now. Cunningham, bounce pass, Bridges knocks it away. We got the steal. Go, 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 Bridges. Do not shoot a pull-up three. Of course he shoots the pull-up three. Of course he does. Idiot. Drive it. Why do we think because we're down eight, we have to go for an instant three? Oh, this fucking does my head in. Ivy the drive. Lost the ball. You're getting the stops. Bro, they're giving you a chance. They're giving you a chance with all these fucking turnovers. Capitalize. 250 to play. True to the drive. Walking a tight rope. It's an open three for Finney Smith. He's got a hit. He does. There we go. Five point game. 240 to play. You've just got to get the stops. Get the damn stops. I may have to pull out the stop chant, ladies and gentlemen. It's been on a on a very long hiatus. I may have to just do it. I'll give it one more possession if we don't get the stop. Cunningham, he's got it. Okay, I'm going to have to do it next possession. And that's provided we score 2.15 to play. Schroeder, handoff. No, he's going to fake it. Schroeder, skip pass to Walker. Drive down the middle. Lay up. Weaves through contact and he scores for two. Are we going to get a fucking timeout here? We've got two minutes to play. It's a five-point game. And these are the leads that Nets players squander. Although the difference is the Pistons have a closer. We don't. Cunningham. He's got Finney Smith guarding him. Lost the ball. And it's a kick ball. Okay. So we've got a stoppage. And I'm just going to... Delay ads. So you're not seeing ads. Cunningham. Shoots. Oh my god. We can't get a stop. There's only so much scoring can do. Schroeder. Walker. Got to get into it quickly. Walker's open for three. It's off. And you can't get the rebound. They've got this in the bag. For sure. One thirty to play. We're really going to have to get the stop now. If we don't get this stop. 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 We got it. Surely. Surely. It's our ball. You idiots. You blind old fart. It's clearly our ball. You have to challenge it. You have to challenge it. You have to fucking challenge it. Let's have a look. That's inconclusive, bro. That's inconclusive. That's very, very tough to call. If that is a turnover, you're seeing the uh, effectiveness of the, uh, the stop chant, number one, and number two... Um, it'll give us a sniff. We need to get three buckets to even get within a sniff of this game. Let's have a look. Oh, it's... That is... I don't know whose ball that is. That's... That is very line ball. I 
I don't know whose that is. Fuck's sake. This is so down bad. This is so down bad. It's actually fucking laughable. We're so down bad. This is what happens when you fucking start the game with DSJ, bro. Whoops, my bad. Bro. How do you start the game down 18 to the fucking Pistons? It would have helped if we didn't score eight points in 10 minutes to start the game. Probably if we're probably 15 points better off. This is another angle which I don't think solves the problem. Oh, that is so close. I don't know who's got that. I don't know who they're going to give this to. Let's have a look. I've got a good eye for this sort of stuff, but I still can't work out whose ball it is. One or the other. Let's have a look. Let's see whose ball it is. I reckon it may be just deemed inconclusive and they just give it to Detroit. Give it to Detroit. Can't be asked. So embarrassing, bro. Another owl to a fucking shit team. Clear, conclusive evidence. I wouldn't say that was conclusive. I mean, it is going to be Detroit's ball. I would have said it's inconclusive. I would have said it was inconclusive, but whatever. It looks like I'm going to have to knuckle down with this stop chant again, and then we're just going to have to... Well, hope the stop chant works. The effectiveness rate is above 93%. I'm going to... Um... I'm going to say give or take a few percent percentage points. Oh, God. 1-13-106. One, 117 to play. 7 to shoot for the Pistons. Get a stop. 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 Okay. Stop chance do work, man. Because the Pistons were forced into a timeout because they couldn't inbound the ball. So Nets are hearing what I'm saying. And um, it looks like I probably should have employed this chant a little bit earlier because it seems like it's got a little bit more effectiveness. You should be describing the replay when you're watching it. Well, this is where my fanboy cap is on. This is where my fanboy cap is on. Every part of the play-by-play the -play is compromised because I'm just becoming a fanboy, which I am. Um, and that's what's going to happen in the final minute, 19 seconds. Because if we somehow muster up seven points in... 80 seconds. Well, I think I'm going to have to just get G'd up. It's just a bit annoying tonight that... Well, I, I cannot believe that we have been outscored by the Pistons in the second half. After that second quarter, that should have set the tone for the way you were going to close this game out. You were going to, like, put the, you know... You know, you were going to fucking reinforce that lead. You would outscored them by 13 in the second quarter. That should have been an indicator. But this is what happens when you can't get offensive rebounds. This is what happens. And I don't understand a team, how a team can be so shit on the glass whenever they remove that scheme that helps them get rebounds. Stop. 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 God, no. Yes, there's the stop. Go. Push the pace. You have no time to waste. Go. 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 Schroeder, on the wing. What are we doing? Walker. Oh, my God. How much clock do you want to use? Bridges for three. Oh, my fucking God. Oh, my God, they called a foul. They called a foul on the three. This game is not over yet, but we know Mikel Bridges is an absolute choke artist at the free throw line. Let's have a look at the foul. Ooh.
Monty Williams is going to call a timeout. Now that's an interesting decision. This could this is game changing, right? The Pistons have challenged a call. Bridges was fouled on a three at the top of the key in which he airballed. Now, Mikel was pretty irate saying he wanted the whistle. Um, so I don't really know what's going to happen here with this call, right? Because I, I actually don't know where the foul is. I'm a bit confused. Detroit have used their final timeout and obviously their final challenge. If they win the challenge, they get the timeout back and they get the challenge back. If they lose, they give away three points or potentially three points and don't have a timeout left. So if they can't inbound the ball, they don't have the basketball. Let's have a listen. Oh, fuck off. So it's, uh, we're, and this is the other fucking annoying thing, right? So we're getting free throws here. It's Thompson who, um, will be hit with the foul, but it was before the shot. We're in the bonus. We'll get two free throws. Now the issue is this, right? I remember early in the last quarter, we had, we were in the bonus at like the seven minute mark of the fourth. We've barely been to the line. When the shots haven't been falling, why have we not attacked the rim? And just added a little bit of rim pressure. It doesn't make sense to me. So, look, Mikel's got to make both of these free throws. That is a given. He's 81% on the season. He's one of two in the game. I don't back him in to make these free throws. I'm hope hopefully jinxing it. Here we go. Oh, my... Ladies and gentlemen, pack your bags. We're going home. <sighs> Fucking idiot, Mikel. Seriously. How the fuck are you an 81% free throw shooter and can't even shoot the ball at 50% from the fucking line in a game? Doubled and fouled. So embarrassing, bro. So Ivy is going to the line. My God, this is embarrassing. If you are enjoying the stream, <laughs> I mean, depending on which side of the uh the ledger you're the ledger you're on, um, make sure to drop a like and um subscribe if you are new. We'll be back for Nets Hornets, regrettably. Pistons have got to get it in. If they don't get it in, they're in trouble. Really should have gotten the the steal there. Schroeder's going to be hit with the foul, and we're, we're forced to intentionally foul at this point. Down six. So Cunningham will shoot. Free throws. So we're going to have to play the long game. And hope they miss free throws. But Cade Cunningham is a good free throw shooter, I do believe. Although, yeah. He's he's not going to be the kind of, kind of free throw shooter to miss... A free throw like Mikel does on the other side, of course. Idiot sandwich. In the words of Gordon Ramsay. What are you? An idiot sandwich. So 115-107. This is going to be an L. True to the drive and kick. Walker's open for three. And it rattles out. Claxton gets like our third offensive board of the game. Took long enough. I don't understand why we're not trying to go for the steal a little bit more aggressively. They don't have a fucking timeout. They can't call it. You have the opportunity to force a five-second violation, man. Kashun, mate, you're tired of the nets, but you will keep coming back. I guarantee you, <laughs> you will keep coming back. 
because that's what a basketball team team does to you. Every single time they lose, you say, I'm not going to watch this team again. But you will. You will watch them again. You'll watch them next game. You'll watch them the game after that. What a wasted performance of Dennis Schroeder's. Bro, he will never play this good again. Well, they've missed one free throw. That's their first of the game. We've got to move it. Walker. Oh, please shoot a three. Please shoot the three. It's Schroeder who misses badly. Bridges gets the board. He fumbled it. Finney Smith the three. It's good. So it's a, a five-point game. Get, you've got to stop it. Oh, my God. They've turned it over. It's... Oh my god, it is a four-point game. You get a point, you get a three-pointer, get the three-pointer first. 23 seconds. You gotta you gotta operate quick. Schroeder, oh my god, he's there. What is he doing? What is he doing taking a fucking two? He's missed four shots all game, and that was one of them. Oh my god. With all the numbers on the inside, you would have thought that he had an open shooter in the corner and he's gone and flung up an air ball. An air ball, bro. Oh my God. That was actually a big opportunity. If he makes that... Voice crack. If he makes that... I'll, I'll continue to say the Pistons do not have a timeout. You could have forced the um, five-second call. That's if he made the shot. But of course, you fluffed it, Dennis. For all the good you've done today, 31 points. He had made 12 of his 15 shots. You cannot fault him for playing like shit today, but it's just like, bro, of all the things to fuck up, that. So 17 seconds, we're down six. Schroeder, oh my God. Very open for three. Walker is off, and that's going to do it. I cannot believe we've lost. We fucking lost to the Pistons! No! <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is why I do neutral live streams, or want to now. Oh my god, you idiots! How? Ass! Is this team? I tell you what. All I have to say is this. Whoever is doing the interview questions tonight, someone needs to go in there and ask Kevin Ollie one simple question. Why in God's... Why on God's green earth did you decide to start DSJ to start this game? We were down 18 points in the first quarter. We scored eight points in 10 minutes. It would be awful, awful if that came back to bite you, wouldn't it? And look what happened. We didn't have enough points at the end of the game. And this is the second consecutive, or no, sorry, second game in three where we have given a very, very shit opponent one very, very strong advantage. And we'll look at the box score and actually break it all down. We trailed at three-quarter time, 81 to 85, which means that in the last quarter they scored 33 points and we scored 31. This is the issue. We actually did not shoot the ball badly. But here's the problem. Here is the problem. First and foremost, you allowed the Pistons to shoot 52% from the field, which... I mean, they started well. But here's the issue. This Pistons team had 20 turnovers. That should be a fireable offense. You should be losing games. But here's the issue. Their backcourt combined for 66 points, number one. And their whole team combined for a 21-point advantage on the glass. Or 21 rebound advantage on the glass. They had 50 boards to fucking 29. We had four offensive boards all game. What a fucking waste of a performance. Waste. That's the box score. Schroeder ended with an excellent showing. He missed his last three shots. 
when in the first 14, he, he missed two. So that sort of sums it up. Clax had 15 and 10, and he had three blocks and a steal, but I actually think he wasn't even a good centre tonight. I think Noah Clowney was actually very impressive for the nine minutes he played. Um, Lonnie Walker at 21, he should have started the game. Full stop. Um, DSJ had a good first half shooting the ball. Second half didn't exist. Um, Mikel Bridges, bro, had a good first half. I, I tell you what, if he didn't turn the ball over the way he did in the last and he actually um, facilitated, I wouldn't give two shits if he scored zero points. Because the way he was playing in the first half where we scored 57 points, you know, that second quarter he was hitting three pointers and only a couple. He wasn't taking shots at a high volume. So I don't think that's the issue. The issue is he had no impact on the game in the last. He didn't really facilitate. He turned the ball over and he didn't score the ball. So he did absolutely nothing on the offensive end. Whereas in the first half, second quarter more so, hit a couple of threes, shared the ball around, didn't really turn it over. <sighs> Whoever is crazy enough to bet on this team, you're stupid. And I just have to continuously say this because I've told people this before. Do not ever think to bet on this team because they are unpredictable as hell. They'll beat a good team, probably won't now, um, but they will lose to absolute shit. And the Pistons, well, today weren't shit. Um, they had six three-pointers from Jaden Ivey, who's shooting 33% on the year. I don't really know what to tell you, to be honest. Um, all I can say, the rebounding, as I, as I said, turnovers, we forced a ton of them. That should have been an absolute, an absolutely brilliant thing to exploit, but um, didn't do a good job in the, in the second half of, of really punishing them. Um, had more steals, had more blocks, turnovers, had seven less. We should have won this game, but the rebounds kill you, um, number one. And um, then when you look at the, you know, the way in which they scored their points, um, when, like, I'm not going to put it down to a Mikel Bridges missed free throw. I'm going to put it down to the layups we probably missed um, in the third quarter. I'm going to put it down to the, you know, the, um, like, how many times did I say, or do I say, you have to end off a quarter strong? And the Pistons scored 12 points in a row at the back end of the third quarter. They carry that form over to the last. We never were able to recover. That was the difference in the game. I don't even think the difference in the game was the start because we recovered that. Um, I think the real difference was in the third quarter. In the third quarter, the way we ended that quarter um, was just not good enough. And we were chasing tail the whole last quarter and never were able to actually get over the hump. Um, yeah, so... It's really as simple as that. I'll look at the fast break points for you because I think that really evened out in the second half. In the first half, we had seven fast break points to nil. The Pistons had 12 uh, fast break points in the second half to two. So they were getting quite a few points in the back end of the quarter. Um, also, points off turnovers. We had 20 points off turnovers to six um, in the first half, I believe. Second half, we only had seven points off turnovers. The Pistons had... Um, a few more. And then second chance points. This is the big one. This is the big deal breaker. This is the big impactful sort of element of the game. They had 23 second chance points to nine. The amount of three pointers they got wide open because we simply couldn't box out. Mikel Bridges, Claxton, Finney Smith. That's all on you. That's all on you. Um, that's the reason we lose the second chance points. Um, and to just really rub salt into the wound, they've just added another turnover to the Pistons tally. So they had 22, not 21, as if that makes the suffering any better or worse. Um, but look, I mean, this is the Nets we have to be accustomed to. Have to be accustomed to. This team, this team is inconsistent. You have to expect the inconsistency because, yeah, that's what they are. Um, these losses will happen. 
and it's really as simple as that it's it's not rocket science really um we severely missed Aaron tonight the rebounding would have been imperative from him in all fairness i don't think the rebounding the rebounding edge for detroit came from the bench or the minutes that Dayron would have played the rebounding that um the pistons had or the advantage came from the starters Claxton not boxing out bridges a couple times had good positioning and just let a player sky, um, sky over the top of him. Um, I think Kevin Ollie's doing a fine job. I'm going to disagree because that would have been an overall coaching decision to start DSJ that put us in a hole immediately, immediately from minute one. Um, yeah. We were down 26-8 to eight in the first quarter. We scored eight points in 10 minutes. DSJ started that game. We didn't score a point with him on the court when he was on. So that is... Look, you could have done with a few extra points in the first 10 minutes of the game. I'll tell you that much. Um, Bridges playing like a player who wants to be traded. Um, I would not say that. I think he played well in the first half. I actually think when he actually... When he has the ball in his hands more... And um, when he actually takes or has to hit, when he has to, has to try make shit happen, that's when it all falls flat. When he has to try take on a defender off the dribble, when he has to try score through contact at the rim, that sort of stuff. That is his Achilles heel. And that's what really kills us. Um, but as I said, it was the third quarter, the back end of the quarter. I don't know if Bridges was on the court at that time. Um, but that was a period of the game which was crucial in swinging the momentum the other way at a really crucial point of the game going into the last. Um, so, yeah. Feels bad, man. Feels bad. Um, look, I will be doing, <laughs> regrettably, the Charlotte game on the weekend. I'll also be doing the uh, Cavaliers game on Sunday night if you're in the US, Monday if you're in Australia. Um, and then after that, next week, I'll just give you a little sort of synopsis as, how, as to how I'm going to go with the games next week um, so you're all up to date and know when to expect the streams. Um, we will miss the Cavaliers game, or sorry, the Magic game midweek. Um, we play one game in about five days. So I won't do the Magic game. I'll do the Pacers game next uh, Saturday night. It will be um, in the US. Then the Spurs, we play them on a back-to-back. -back. Um, there'll be three games in four days. We won't do the Pals game midweek. And then that'll lead us into the Nets-Bucks Nets game. Speaking of the Bucks, um, if you are interested in me doing a neutral watch party, um, we are going to do um, the Nets, or sorry, not the Nets, the Bucks versus the Sixers um, on the Thursday night if you're in the US next week. Um, and it'll be um, a Friday morning if you're in Australia. It'll be the Bucks taking on the Sixers. Um, I'm not sure if the Sixers will have Maxi, but I'm going to take the opportunity with Joel Embiid out to actually potentially enjoy watching a bit of Sixers basketball. I think Pat Bev is going to rile up um, a few Sixers players. So um, I think that may be a good game to watch. But um, if you want to tune in to that one, um, make sure to also subscribe. Um, but yeah, these losses really are just rubbing salt into the wounds. But I guess it's a good thing because it means our season will end earlier. Um, we won't have to go through the stress of playing a playing game. Um, and I think it's going to be good that we don't play a playing game because it'll be a harsh reality. Um, a harsh reality for this Nets team. A couple of runs conceded in the second half really just cost us. We couldn't recover. Um, and ultimately, you know, with the Hawks winning some important games and us dropping two games in like three to Memphis and Detroit, who would have thought? And when you look at those players that they've got and the amount of wins they have combined, it's no good. It's an awful look. Um, but it also means that, yeah, our potential to make the play-in is, uh, well, it's slimming down by the day. Um, and you know what? I'm not, I'm not mad about it. 
I'm really not mad about it because, yeah, if if it allows us to come to a conclusion more so with regards to um, how good or how shit this team is, we know which one is the answer, um, you know, um, then I'm happy about it. I'm happy about it. So, um, yeah, that's going to do it from me, though. Um, I hope you enjoy... Um, I hope you enjoyed it. We've got the hardest draw left because we are playing the weakest teams. I think truer, truer words have never been spoken. Um, yeah. Yeah. It almost seems as if, yeah, the, the tough games are the ones that, yeah, really kill you. Um, the, or the tough games against the weak teams. The weak teams, these losses really kill you. Um, but, yeah, I mean, all we can do is move forward, I guess. It's just another loss. We've had plenty of those this season. I mean, that's loss number 38. So it shouldn't really come as a surprise. But um, that's going to do it from me. Um, big night tonight, if you're an AFL supporter. Carlton play the Brisbane Lions. That's going to be good. Um, but yeah, that's going to do it from me. Thank you for tuning in, everyone. We will see you for the next stream in about 48 hours. Stay safe until then. Um, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for the support. Um, voice crack included, of course. You'll get plenty of those watching this. Um, but yeah, that's going to do it for me. So we'll see you soon. Um, yeah, don't let this loss dictate your week, for God's sake. We'll see you in 48 hours. Have a good one, guys. Thank you.